What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. I'm Dre from Ambotuned and today I'm pretty much going to start a new little series where I kind of go through a tune and kind of discuss with you guys how long it took, the issues that we encountered and things like that. So today we have this 17 STI that is on 93 octane. It has a Grim Speed 500 turbo uh, with a front mount intercooler kit, equal length headers, uh, Perrin um, cold air intake. It does have a built block and it has injector um, 1050s and an AEM 340 fuel pump with a EBCS. So we decided to tune this car on open source. Um, we started this tune back in September 26. And just a fair warning, it did take a long time to fully tune this car because it did have a lot of issues along the way. So, if I recall correctly, we just actually finished it up today. So, yes, I know what you're thinking. Hey, why did it take so long? This is a complete e-tune, and this car ended up having a couple of issues that I'm going to try to explain along the way. So... If I can't remember it, let me see if I can download this watt. So the, I, I sent the customer a base map. Um, obviously, it's a base map. There's not going to be a lot of power at it. Everything's kind of turned down. Um, if we look at Virtual Dyno, and this is for the, I have it set for 15 STI, but it applies to the 27. 15 also. But let's see what this car made. Um, so, the first base map that I sent, it made 350. Um, I don't know if, I don't know if it's gonna show boost, but, okay, so it does. So that was at 18 PSI for boost. Um, the base map was actually pretty dialed in because I felt very comfortable with do it. Most of the time I send base maps out, it's going to be a little bit lower. Now, while working through this car, obviously there was a couple check lights, things like that. Um, as you know, with the emissions, things like that. There's only so much that we can do. And I think on this car, he had a couple of things deleted and things like that. So, obviously there's a thin line right there on what you can and cannot do. This is obviously open source. So, we kind of made some exceptions doing it. So, as working through the tune, um, I started making adjustments to the car. So, we got to this next watt log, which, where did Virtual Dyna go? So, this next watt log, with a little bit actual less boost, um, we actually made a lot more power. Um, I think, I think, I think that's what it happened was, is that when he did the first watt log, there was a couple of codes limiting some things. Um, we fixed out those issues and got it back to where it was going to go. Um, I think if I recall correctly, 
So, on that walt log, if I'm not, I can't show the AFR because it wasn't logging. He has an actual gauge in the car, but the car was leaning out, and I think that was one of the main issues that we started to have with the car from the very, very beginning. We started having issues with that, and obviously, it was either going to be a boost leak or fuel pressure was dropping. So I let the customer know that. I let him know that, and this was already October 4th. And he double-checked everything. So he went through the fuel pressure, double-checked that, um, so I think the problem was, is as he says right here, is that he bumped up the fuel pressure from 35 to 38. Now on these cars, your fuel pressure, most base fuel pressure, you're going to set it with the car running and you're going to remove the vacuum line from the FPR, the fuel pressure, um, regulator and you're gonna set it to 43.5 and then when you connect the vacuum line back it normally is going to sit around 37 to 38 uh, fuel pressure um, and that's where I kind of explained to him here where fuel pressure needed to be that um, which it looks like he did that and then he did do a boost leak check and if there was no leaks or anything like that so we didn't find any issues there so I told him to send an idle log just to be sure that everything was working perfectly and I'll open that um, Doom, 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 doom. So, the idle log seems pretty fine. It was idling right at the target, right around 800 RPM. And then it, the fuel terms were pretty much perfect, which normally when this happens, I will tell the customer to go ahead and do the other logs or do the watt log. So, right here, as you can see, that's what I ended up doing. Um... So I think he started going through all the pulls and he sent a lot of logs here. So let's see this next wall log. So if we open this up. Okay, well that didn't work because he sent the same wall log. So... I think this one was the correct one that he sent. Um, there we go. So after fixing the fuel pressure and having the issues, obviously I had to send him a map with it, with the timing removed and a couple other things removed. And that is why you see the power difference now going from... 400 down to this actual number right here because I if I know that the car has issues I'll start turning back the power and then once those issues are fixed we will add the power back in so if we follow um, I made my adjustments to whatever these logs were and he went and did the next watt lock. So, added a little bit more power in, added a little bit more boost back in, 18.5. And now we are here on the blue. And obviously you can see the car actually pick up power during the process, right around six or 365 is horsepower now I looked at all these logs and I made the adjustments to it um, this possibly was a weekend when this happened
because normally I'm pretty quick about getting logs back to customers. So it probably, was it a weekend? Let's see, October 17th, actually no, it was a Tuesday. I probably was possibly backed up. That's just the reality of it. Sometimes it's on the weekend, so you might not get a log back for two or three days. And then if it's during the week, sometimes um, you'll just have me backed up and I'm trying my best to work through, or possibly I was traveling that week. I have no idea. But I think he went and did another walt log. And let's see where we're at now. There we go. So obviously everything checked out on the previous walt logs. And we are now on revision six and we made a little bit more power, same boost, probably just um, messing with AFR and also adjusting timing on the car. And we got a little bit more power out of that. Now, we probably went towards, so I made the adjustments again. He went out and did the walt log. I think we start having issues coming up. Yeah, so the car actually, that pull right there, it ran way less boost. And so I caught it correctly. I'm pretty sure the car started having issues right here. And it was acting very strange. And maybe I mention it. Actually, no, I just took the log and I made the adjustments based off of that. It's possible that it had issues. So, da, 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 let's see if it opens up correctly. Um, very possible. Yeah, so it was definitely having a couple of issues. Um, what was it? What was it on this map? Um, requested torque was there, so that was fine. I think this map was... It wasn't running the full... Yeah, that's what it was. So it wasn't running the full wastegate duty. So boost just dropped. I think the intake temp was very, very cold. And when the intake, intake temp is really cold... I have the tune pull back a certain percentage of boost in order to keep the motor safe. So then I made the changes to the map. He did another pull. So let me try to go in order of this. So now we are here. And now it actually goes lower. <laughs> One of these, we start having problems. And I don't know exactly which one it was. But this is a part of the e-tuning process. You have things like this. As you can see, the car was making good power. And then either tuning adjustments needed to be made due to um, compensations in the tune. Or you have issues like this where it just kind of does something crazy. Yeah, so this one... Um, intake temp was even colder this time so it probably pulled back a lot more and we also had some crazy knock um, the table the timing was doing some crazy thing and I needed to I think fix that inside of the tune um, something was definitely causing that so I probably went through that log made some changes by this time on revision 9, it's already almost the end of October, and let's see where we end up now. So boom, I made some adjustments, it, obviously it looks like boost stayed around the same of 20 PSI, and the car picked back up the power. Um, I probably definitely made some changes to AFR. I 
pretty sure I fixed the timey map and sent him the new map to do some logs. So as you can see here, by revision 10, we started having some issues, some weird random issues with the car. And if it shows, yeah, so he had a check engine light for the wastegate and we needed to figure out what was going on. So he mentioned that the AOS was hanging on top of the rod, something like that. So I made a couple of adjustments and told him to do another walk pull to see what would happen. It could have been the AOS being on top of the wastegate actuator, possibly not, but he ended up doing another walk log. So where did it go? Um, hang, I keep like losing it. All right, so, so. Now we're on revision 10 and he had the wastegate actuator. That's why he couldn't even go out to redline or anything like that. He said that he possibly fixed it because the AOS, something with the AOS being on top of the wastegate actuator and boom. So now that there was not getting any more codes, I made the adjustments that needed to be made torque was holding out pretty perfectly and we made some actual decent power we hit over 400 now remember this car does have a built block so i'm able to run a little bit more than normal um I think we made some more adjustments for revision 12. Now it's actual the end of um, the 30th. And then he sends me a log two days later. And let's see what happens on revision 12. Okay. So. I made some minor changes, obviously, the next pool. We made a little bit, overall, we lost, we lost power. Um, obviously, the car was making a lot more power on the previous map here. This one was a little bit down, but I think what ended up happening was is I was trying to, as you can see here, it hits 20 PSI, but then it does like this little dip right here. So I was trying to smooth it out a little bit. So I most likely removed just a tad bit of timing just to be on the safe side to make the adjustments. So there's nothing wrong with tuning the car and going up in power, going lower, da da da, to make the changes that you want to make and make sure that you're being safe about it. So we got to this point and made a couple more adjustments and we ended up having the wastegate issue again. So this car ended up having a lot multiple issues during the tuning process, which is one of the reasons why it took so long. But obviously the adjustments that I made from revision 12 allowed the car to pick up a lot more power. It even made boosts a little bit sooner and but we had the wastegate code pop up once again which he couldn't make a full pull but at least you guys are seeing the overall tuning process and how you're making power and then you're not making power and then you're making just to fully dial in the car and overall this last map if it didn't have the wastegate code it made power a lot sooner than the previous map and that's what you want to see you want to Make sure that you see the differences and things like that. Now, made some adjustments based on what he said, the code and all that. But then we started having fuel cut issues. <laughs> so, I was kind of 
weirded out about this because I know he said that there was a fuel issue, but the car was actually did a full pull. It didn't lose that much power at all. And everything seemed fine to me. So let me actually open that log and see what actually happened. So we have, yeah. So I needed to make some more adjustments to the timing table, make sure that it was hitting what it needs to be hit. Um, yeah, 57. Yeah, so on that log, he stopped at 50. Yeah, he stopped at 57. Ah, that's what happened. So that's the reason why he couldn't go out farther, because it did hit a fuel cut, which most likely was a boost cut, but I don't think we had any boost cut issues while tuning this car. I think there was primarily the wastegate um, issue that was happening. And... So I made some changes. And let's see what happens. All right, so we made some changes and we made a little bit less power. Um, I think I was trying, if, if it was actual fuel issue and not a boost leak, it was probably Checking the fueling of the car, making sure that it was running correctly. And then, yeah, I think that's what was happening. We were battling the AFR sensor. And the car was pretty dialed in. Um, I think he was asking about the limiting factor of power. And it was mainly... On this car, you're gonna run into the fueling limit and being on 93. Um, not so much 93, because you can make a little bit more power on 93 compared to if this car was on E85. Luckily, he has a built block, so we can add a little bit more power than normal. Now, we get down to this part, R16. And makes a little bit less power. And this was map, this is revision 16. And we started at the end of September, if I recall correctly. Yeah, end of September after issues and whether he took a little bit longer to send me logs or if I took a little bit more logs. Mainly the issues is what caused the biggest time frame in between um, him trying to figure out what was actually going on. I'm not there with the car, so I can't, I can kind of point him in the right direction. I just can't tell him exactly what the, what the problem is because I can't sit there and physically look at the car. So, this guy did have a stock turbo before. So normally, when you put a bigger turbo on the car, you're probably gonna be around like 340, 350, most likely 370, just depending on what size turbo you put on it, on pump gas. Um, he does have 1300s on the side for whenever he does decide to go E85 which is the cool thing because it should be a really fun, fun car. Now we are on revision 17. And I th think we run into another issue if I recall correctly. So not yet, but we do. So we made some more adjustments. The car made a lot more power. Once the AFR and everything checked out, there was no more codes for the wastegates. I said, screw it, let's add some more boost. We have a built block. Let's see what the car can do. 
So this time we jumped up to, if it shows, about 22 PSI, tapering down to 19. Um, as you can see, even if I put this on like two, smoothing two, the, the curve is still pretty smooth. And with virtual dyno, obviously zero is just gonna, you can't use zero. One, you can still use, it's still pretty smooth. So that means timing is pretty good, boost is really good. Um, normally on virtual dyno, you probably wanna sit between three. Normally I go with three. Um, if you do like six, it's very, very like just super smooth. Um, but as you can see, the graph is very smooth going out to seven. It's pretty much holding out the power. It's just dropping just little by little on that map. So I sent that to him and let him know, hey, a lot better. But I think something is wrong with the AFR sensor. It's reading 12 o Even though I added fuel, it's not knocking on pump gas. So the AFR sensor was actually reading 12 o which was very weird. And I didn't really want to push the car anymore if that was really the case. But when it was running 12 on a pump gas car, normally you will see some feedback knock or dam drop but that wasn't the case. So I thought maybe it's very possible that something was going on. Um, the car ran pretty fine. There was no knock, nothing like that. So we had a conversation about knock sensors. Um, I use the stock knock sensitivity on most cars. Um, I explained to him that on the last map, the car showed 12 0 and I added 10% fuel, which should put it around 11, and it's not going in stage 12 AFR. So we ended up having an issue where I forgot a table. I'll say that I forgot the table, and there's a math limiter table, and since we were doing more than normal boost and making more than normal um, power, we were starting to hit a math limit on the car. And I think it was, I think it was um, limited to 300 G's a second. And we needed to go up a little bit higher. So... I think I think once I made that change in the the map, it was just a random table that I just completely forgot about. And I think when we made that adjustment, the car AFR started reading correctly. And the weird thing was is that it made a lot more power. Like if you if you if you see on that map I think this was actually like a weird, actually no, even on one, it's pretty smooth. Um, it made a lot more power at a lot less boost, but it was also running a lot richer. So I think the car was actually reading 12.0 and that's why the power was kind of hindered, even though the car was running very well. The car on this map, went way rich it was like 10 0 afr after that one little table adjustment that's why you have to be very careful about tuning and things like that once the car actually got the fueling back it made very good power at way less boost um so that's one of the problems that we ran into while tuning the car uh, now, I think we made the adjustment for revision 18. And let's see what happens.
so there we go so um most likely what happened here was i probably removed a little bit of timing but put boost back in um not all the changes that you make are going to be good changes it just always depends as you can see i raised the boost back to where it was two or three maps ago and the car lost power um, compared to where it ran like this. But I also think I fixed the AFR and I started pulling back a little bit of fuel so that could also play a part into it. Um, but normally when you're pulling back fuel, especially after a car's being super, super rich, normally it will pick up a little bit of power. Um, let's see. So I think, uh, let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, I think we did run into some issues um, with the fuel. Um, it was losing fuel pressure. And give me one second, one second, one second. Um, we had some more issues and we kind of had to, he had to figure it out. So when we started having the issues, just to show you guys kind of like a timeline, this was December 14th and then he had to go through a whole process of trying to figure out what was going on. The weather was super cold. It was negative 40 apparently. <laughs> And we didn't finish, we didn't start back up of tuning until March 26. So when I told you guys at the beginning of the thing that we started this tune at the end of September and we just got done with it now, from December, mid-December, all the way three months later, we, didn't, we couldn't do any tuning. The car was having issues, it was cold outside, um, obviously I put time limits on tunes, but things like this going back and forth, it's just part of the game. So we went through and we made some adjustments after December, revisiting the car and I took I sent him a map and I took all the power out and kind of started fresh, way less power, all that, just to double check everything, make sure everything's good because we're starting back up three months later. Um, I sent him a revision. By this time, um, I think I reset the map count, but I think we're on like map. 18 or 19 and I think he had fixed all the issues during the car um, those three months and we revisit back so now we're here starting out after again after three months and I make a revision I send it to him and I think he sent me the same one. I guess he sent me the same log. So even he mentioned that the car has always been slightly annoying in every way. I think he sent me the same log. So um, I sent him a new map. And let's see what this one does. Okay, so. A little bit more boost, not too, too much, about 17 PSI. The car gets back up in power. So I'm like, okay, everything's looking well. Um, I got AFR fixed again and added a little bit more fuel. 
and he went out and did another watt pool so now we are here and the car just decided not to make power most likely i didn't remove boost but the intake temps probably caused that um also on that pool the watt log started to have some more issues because of the wideband um the wideband was just not reading so he sat there and redid it because apparently when he closed the laptop between logs it just cut it fully off and i think this map we get back to where we normally were no not yet not yet not yet not yet maybe it was the next map um okay yeah so the afr worked perfectly i make some adjustments i send it out to him and we it's one of these maps we just go back to normal where it was over 400 in an instance not yet okay so making some more adjustments, making sure that fueling's fine, everything's good. Boost is still low. It hits, it's not super low, it hits 20, but it's not hitting as it was before. And the power is, you know, 360. It's one of these maps where we like, it just increases by a lot because I just, I just kind of send it once I made sure everything else was good. Maybe it's this one. Okay, a little bit better, but it had like this weird um thing and I think this was, yeah. So it might've been just been the road that he was on. It was doing some crazy funky, funky stuff. So I think I made some adjustments to that and Boost was still almost, it was at 18, it was a little bit lower. It was lower boost than the previous one, but it made more power. Um, you have to remember that tuning is all about finding the perfect combination for the car. The car can make more power with less boost, more timing, or more boost, less timing. Did I say that right? The car can make more power with more boost, less timing, and some cars can make more power with less boost and more timing. Dude, I can't remember what I just said. More boost, less timing, less boost, more timing. Yeah, 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 yeah I think so. Sorry, I only have three hours of sleep, so. If I still manage to get that wrong after like three tries, Oh, well. Um, so we sent that log, and then, yeah. So I was saying, I was telling him that we're pretty much done, just dialing it a little bit more. And then we finally get to this revision. I think we're already 25 maps in, if I recall correctly. And boom. A little bit more boost added, directly 20 PSI. And um, we got to th 425. And as you can see, um, zero you really can't use. But two, it, even at two, it's very smooth. Um, and I think, yeah, so I think it's just about where I kind of left it at. Um, I asked him if there was any other issues or concerns and he said that he's happy with it for now. So that was just the overall tuning process for the car. And as you can see, there was a couple of issues that we had me forgetting one table um you know i'm human i make a couple mistakes here and there or i forget something um the main reason why it took so long remember we started 
back at the end of September. We had a few issues um, during the end of September into October and even November. Um, then the weather started getting a little bit cold, chilly, more issues. And then there was a three month break. So September all the way till now, it did take a long time to tune the car, but after a whole bunch of issues and things like that, we managed to work out all the issues and the car works perfectly fine. Um, I would say that the car is probably around 420 to 430. Um, torque, obviously, we could have run probably more, um, since it has a built block, we probably could have run more torque and all that. On pump gas, I like to be a little bit more safer. You know, I tune for real reliability. And as this, like, we're right on the normal stock block limit of 400 pounds of torque. Um, but like I said, we could have added, if he asked for like a little bit more of a race map, I'll add a little bit more boost because there's still more boost we could have done. We probably could have made a lot more power, but I think, I think this, um, car was getting close, um, on fueling. Maybe it was a different car. I think, um, I think it was a different car. Uh, no, nah, we're not even close. So 64% was a different car I was thinking about. The car, we could obviously push a little bit more power if we wanted to. Um, and see what the heck it can do on pump gas. But if the customer asks for it, I most likely will increase the power later on. Um, but I felt like this would probably be like a good daily on pump gas. You know, it's safe, it's reliable. It shouldn't have any issues, nothing like that. So I just wanted to kind of show you guys, I'm gonna do this for a couple of cars as I tune them and kind of go through the tuning process, the ups and downs. And I hope you guys kind of like this series. Let me know if you guys like it. I'll do some more breakdowns of things. And thanks for watching. Peace out.